Steins Gate is timeless. Uh oh, I know nobody's in here for this, so we definitely clicking on this shit. <sighs> Steins Gate is a massive waste of my time. That's something past me would have said. Going into the anime and being about six, seven episodes. In I would have slapped the fuck. I would slap the fuck out of past you, cause that's a fucking crazy statement. That is a bizarre statement to even have thought in your goddamn head, brother. Then, I was slamming my head into a brick wall going through each episode, which by the way was done with a watch party in the Patreon Discord server, if you want to join, link in the description below. Of course I was Y'all aware of weird. the subtle things, and as well as some of the more strange things happening throughout the series were jabs, if you will, to set up the big haymakers, the plot twist that will bring it all together. But it actually seems I landed at the wrong time, and we need to go back again. The year is 2009, where before being an anime, the original source material for Steins Gate is a visual novel, yep. and then well, it was released as an anime in 2011. It's about the main character Okabe, self-proclaimed mad scientist, that gets himself and his friends into a world of pain and madness by messing with time travel. This would have been vital information for me before I got into the series, since from what I know, visual novels love taking their sweet time and setting things up. The pacing can be unbearable at first, and I wouldn't encourage it, but I'm also not going to blame anyone for dropping it. Again, I wouldn't encourage it. Even though the odd things that stick out like a sore thumb that occurred throughout the series will catch your eye, the rest can really seem like pointless filler conversations. In retrospect, a lot of those conversations not only ground the characters in the- I was about to- boy, I was about to say it. I was about to say it, bro. He, he's so glad he beat me to it, bro. He's very glad he beat me to it. ...setting and help us get familiar with their personalities, but it also directly correlates and subtly connects one thing to another. Also, apologies for this video taking so long. For some reason, the train station kept on being halted. So we have Okabe, or Okarin, the protagonist of the story. I am a scientist. It's so cool. Instead of a bitch. At first, he calms a smidge re uh, eccentric, but is incredibly intelligent. Karisu, Incredibly. who should be dead from a stabbing but isn't, ends up as Okabe's assistant, and both of them are Sundere as hell. Itaru yep. or Daru, my boy Juicy, and I'm not calling him Juicy. No, I have he's a close Juicy. No, he's Juicy, man. Juicy. He's like Daru and Frank he's Castle juicy. put together. One moment you could talk about sophisticated things, and the other moment he's trolling you, making some perverted remark and screaming, Yes, kid! Suzaha, an athletic chick who seems to be very out of place. Moeka, a quiet chick that's always on her phone. Scamboli reviews. Nia. Yeah, then nice. Okabe's landlord, a femboy, and last but not least, Mayuri. A longtime friend of Okabe who is sweet and caring and definitely on the spectrum. A satellite sort of thing crashes into a building, someone gets murdered, but it turns out they're alive, Kurisu. They find a way to send messages through time and call it D-mail. I'm not gonna bother, it's too easy. Don't explain. And even though I'm blitzing through all this stuff, admittedly, it was getting frustrated when they started explaining the concept of time travel again. Uh, I know that's what the series is about, Hold but on. it really felt like it was taking forever to get to the key points. If you enjoy the character interactions, then that's great, more power to you. For me personally, I've always struggled with watching anime, so this was really a test of patience. What? I wanted Nigga, you struggled with watching anime and took on one of the most complex stories in anime? Like, the, some of the shit y'all do don't be making sense to me the series to get on with it. We see articles as well of what seems to be previous time travel attempts, and some sort of organization called CERN gets brought up often that are the bad guys of the story. But how much you can trust and take seriously is tricky because of how it, false it all seems coming from Okabe. Okay. Uh, it turns out he needs this really old computer called the IBN 5100 so that CERN can't track and monitor his time travel shenanigans, yep. but he's already sent a D-mail, so keep that in mind. It's also important to note that he's having conversations with someone regarding this all online who goes by the name of John Teeter, but the real him will be revealed as things go on. Big so then practice. experiment with more time travel, they upgrade from sending D-mail to microwaving bananas. Uh, I would highly recommend to anyone that wants to conduct science experiments to not go shoving things into microwaves. A pal of mine recently got really hooked on Steins Gate and uh, well, this is how it went. If I'm gonna put this in the microwave, and then that is the majority of what is going on within okay, the first bro. episodes. Going through it, of course, I was interested in seeing how the spider web all connects as the series kicks it into next gear. I wasn't really connected or all that invested in any of the characters, however. Some of the other characters slowly get more involved, playing a piece into the things that would have eventually be resolved later than BAM! Episode 12 hits and the Moeka chick pops in, yep. wearing all latex and Tupac's my <laughs> 
Okay. Bagger, bagger. Out, understandably, and uses the microwave machine to go back in time to stop the event from happening. But he fails again. And, and again, again, and again, 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 and again, and again, and just when you think he's about to succeed, plot twist! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I love this so much. From here on out, Steins Gate goes from being something that was taking me over four months to watch from episodes one to twelve to something I ended up binging in a day. I'm sure some of you might. I'm telling you, bro, you're gonna get fucking hooked. Once they give you that fucking right hook, it's a wrap. You're done. <laughs> season one, season two, you're hooked. I might not be happy about how mostly negative I've sounded so far about the first half of the show, so I'll make my stance clear now since some of you complain about everything, eat crayons, and lick windows. Look, I would much rather a series take its time building things up properly and in a natural way so when the story does hit, it. like it will from now on with the turning points, it gets better and better as things go on. That's exactly what happens with Steins Gate. Seeing how it all comes together and each character we spend time with plays a more important part than we were led to believe at first. Like the Moeka chick who turned out to be working for FB, a mysterious person that is working under CERN, and this whole time you notice she's off, but was I going to guess that she was going to be popping up and killing someone wearing nope. all latex? No, not really. Uh, I wouldn't be betting my house on that. Now, some of you might be wondering why I don't put a spoiler warning for this type of stuff at the beginning, and I would ask you, why are you watching a video on a series? What do you expect me to talk about after that? That's what I would have asked him, nigga. I would ask him, nigga. Exactly. This ain't exactly. The anime, Moeka turns out to be a rather tragic character in the end, and we get an interesting look at the effects of loneliness, but I don't feel myself feeling sympathetic towards her character Fuck at all. That bitch. You know, having her kill one of the more likable characters in the series over and over and over again. Yeah, that'll do that. Now, going back to episode 8, where Luka Doncic, the femboy, I never thought that would be a sentence ever in my life, ended up becoming a girl because of some timeline jumping business. Uh, here I bit the bullet, honestly, because I was like, there's no way that this is actually going to be relevant to to the store <laughs> it is you <laughs> you come into episode 18 homophobic I'm not gay no more and by the end of it you come out of the closet I'm gay. now along with being incredibly sympathetic <laughs> oh, for Luca of course I was more sympathetic for Okabe the facade he puts on slowly being eroded by this point, but when things hit the fan, we get to see the protective instinct and nature he has for Mayuri. His intelligence is matched by his care for others, although his need to do it for Mayuri and not let her die could yeah. rightfully be seen as selfish attachment. Him saying he's doing it for Mayuri might sound unselfish, but I think he's incapable of letting go. But that go. wasn't the truth, that though. Well as him saying he didn't care about the fate of the world, he cared about Mayuri. That wasn't the truth, he though. Mayuri herself saying that you can't hold on to me forever. There were hints of this sort of selfish attachment, I think, earlier in the series. But nonetheless, it's a very minor flaw as we don't really see the negative extent to it as we can with other characters. Seeing him break down knowing that it will inevitably happen again is heartbreaking. Yeah. And the anime kind of montages it, but I imagine in the visual novel, this is given excruciating detail, the feeling of despair of trying again and again, and even the immense loneliness from trying to handle it all alone. I think a strange personality is what allows him to stand out in the beginning. The mystery is what keeps you around, but I think it's when we start getting the payoffs along with these amazing moments with Okabe's yeah. character that really cements Steins Gate as a story for me. At first he tries his best to handle it all on his own, but the dozens of dozens of failure lead to him getting the other lab members involved, as well as the one chick who seemed very out of place throughout the entire story. She had demonstrated to be aware of certain events and even showed up to stop Moeka in episode 12. Suzaha, the athletic chick turned out to completely exceed any expectation I had for her character, revealing to be from the future, here to stop CERN from taking complete control. And you see, this sort of hero from the future trying to stop an apocalypse or one world government dictatorship is not new at all. So if you ever really want to upset a Steins Gate fan, just say Future Trunks did it better. But if that's all the series oh, yeah, really had going on for it, then I think it would have fallen flat. You. But it's the time the series took with its characters and the very personal consequences it has on the present to Okabe and the people he cares about. To add on top of all of that, Suzuha comes off as an incredibly human character with her desire to find her father. I don't want to say she stole the show, but oh man, did she leave an impact in she the short did. amount of time she was there. She, she goes back to try and find her father who she never met, instead of going back further like and she was goodbye. supposed to. The satellite from the first episodes is no satellite at all but if not a time machine that needs to be fixed john teeter the person that uh, okabe was messaging with yeah that's her the more this anime goes on the more every excruciatingly boring moment from the beginning it comes into it. turns into a satisfying build-up as your mind pieces things together oh it's a great God. way to make the audience so beautiful. incredibly invested beautiful in the mystery solving process 
Like when Daru says the time machine has a similar makeup to the microwave time machine, and how naturally him and Suzaha seem to get along very well, I immediately picked up on it. But for those that didn't by that point before its reveal, I suggest watching the Mori show. They get her time machine fixed so she could go back and do what she needs to do in order to prevent would never things from happening in the future, but there are some complications along the way. And this is where Scamboli becomes relevant in the story. The cat girl is one of the ones who would send a D-mail that needed to be reversed in order to prevent Mayuri's death, as well as has a tie to the IBN computer which plays a key part in dealing with CERN. I didn't think much of this given the emotional torture chamber that's been going on since the end of episode 12. Uh, what started off as a cast of characters I mostly didn't care for, in a short amount of time became you one that emotionally attached me and made every sad moment all the more heartbreaking and every wholesome moment worth sitting through. See now let me break it down from a nigga who cared from the very beginning. Those minor interactions were important because you were, you're a story person. You were seeing these minor interactions and you knew that they were going to be important to the story later. So, this loop that's time, this loop that, um, well, he said the main character's name, I'm fucking ass on names, uh, whatever, whatever his fucking name is, the loop that he's on, you feel that, bro. Every time I ever dies, you feel it, bro. It didn't take you 12 episodes, it didn't take you, bro, you got it, well, 12 episodes is when it happened, but every time it happened, every time she died, every time all them characters died, but it didn't take you a season to get there, bro, you were attached from the beginning, bro. That's what makes Times Gate so good to me. I over and over, having someone in love with him have to give up that love. He then has to find out his landlord was FB the entire time, manipulating Moeko who originally kills herself, and instead now, because of all the time traveling, the landlord kills her, then kills yeah. himself, leaving a little girl all alone. Yeah, this series seems to leave no stone unturned. I'm impressed. None. I would have been scarred had I not read certain other things, but impressed nonetheless still. But as if what Okabe had to go through wasn't enough to give 28 generations trauma, the tsundere dynamic between him and Kirisu pays off. Seeing them interact was great, and I could tell from the start where it was going, but that doesn't take away from the satisfaction of the confession. However, in order to set things back to the right timeline to save Mayuri, they need to go back to the timeline where originally Kirisu was killed by a stabbing. Remember that I mentioned at the beginning? Yeah. So once again, the painful cycle repeats now, where instead he now has to save Kirisu from being killed. But once he was close to giving up, he's smacked into his senses, given some motivation, not the first time, and finds a way to save Mayuri and Kirisu. You only get one life and no do-overs, is a beautiful message. The universe is infinite, but the stars are finite. A reminder to enjoy the life we have and those we share it with. Past me was going through the early episodes, and still looking back on them, they aren't to my personal preference and pacing, but I would much rather that than a bunch of That's crazy, points that bro. aren't properly hey, set up. I'm not gonna lie, if you can't go back... And like, pick, like he probably goes back and picks up on all, all the little small things. But like, seeing it, bro, picking up on those small things when you rewatch it, bro, do not make those episodes feel long at all, bro. They breeze by, at least in my opinion. But this is also from a person that never had a problem with those episodes in the first place, though. Not expanded upon. This was something I mentioned in a previous video where I was concerned getting into the series because often time travel can be used as a convenience when the author has written themselves into a corner, leading to an outcome that feels incredibly unsatisfactory. But, but Steins Gate was patient, and I needed to be patient with it as it was yeah. setting everything up from the start, an incredible web being formed as the time passed with each episode. And when it seemed the time went by faster as the conflict and tension rose, I realized I cared for these characters far more than I originally expected. Mm. What a character. And I'm sure that's not how I thought, bro. I care for them niggas like they were my brothers and sisters, bro. I felt I was attached since episode one, brother. Read the visual novel and seen Steins Gate Zero can testify even more. It took the concept of time travel seriously and did an excellent job of making the ending we feel earned by the struggle Okabe has to go through, no matter how many times he tries to go back and fix things. Past me felt Steins Gate was a waste of time, but present me sees Steins Gate for what it is. W, w present you. El Paso. Fucking beautiful ass anime. Now, I like to say this at the end of... I like to say this at the end of these videos. If you've never watched Steins Gate and you clicked and made it to the end of this video, you're actually a psychopath. But, go watch it. Because it is one of the most rewarding shows. It is one of the most... Intrinsic shows. The story... It's so deaf, deaf. It is so brilliant.